Morning, this is Troy from the do-it-yourself world and the off-grid project. The wind has wreaked havoc out here at the homestead. There are twigs and branches all over the place. I mean, the ground is just fully littered. Baby cats attacking a box. The wind last night was brutal, absolutely insane. And it flipped over some of my solar panels, which have never, ever moved. And it actually broke two of my wires. So I've got two new connections I'm going to be putting on there. It was, we had up to 50 mile an hour winds last night. We did get the predicted winds, finally. The uh, really insane winds. We had sustained 20, 25 mile an hour winds with gusts up to 50 miles an hour, which flipped over my solar panels on their faces, which I've never, ever had happen before. And I'm out there trying to rewire. We have a minus negative something or other degree wind chill factor with 20 mile an hour winds yet today um, it's gusting so it's not sustained like it was yesterday but the wind chill factor is insane and um, going out there trying to work on the wires a bit come back in go back out come back in the wind blows right through my clothes and uh, it's really cold so I'm trying to get power in the tiny house on wheels. It's quarter to ten in the morning and I still don't have power in the tiny house. So I'm struggling with that trying to get the solar panels connected. It's just hard because I cannot do it with gloves. There's no way I can work on that with gloves on with little wires and fine work. So I'm just trying to get it done. Now I've repositioned the one panel more in a south facing direction. This was a perfect opportunity to reposition the panel. The others are frozen into the ground somewhat so it's going to be really hard to get them moved but I'm going to try. And that is a direct south facing direction now, that one there. I know they were not facing directly south because they, right now the south is, the sun is in these trees here and southwest it's in this clearing. So I had them catching the uh, late midday sun in that clearing before it went down below the trees. I'm going to experiment with them facing south but I don't know if it's going to be any better really because of those trees. So we'll see how that goes. But I gotta get out there and get those wires connected. Well I've got my hole cutter and drill. I've marked out where the hole is going to be in the floor. Know how well I can do this without blocking the view from you. Got an old, old hole cutter here. Really old tool. Just manages to fit the job. I've marked out the center of the hole. I'm hoping this isn't going to hit the floor joist. No, it's an oldie. It's bent. Clean the floor, you don't have to watch me do that. You would not believe the luck. My drain hole has lined up precisely with a cutout from the previous camper's drain. See that plastic sheet down there? 
That's a loose flap of plastic down there. That is where the original cutout was for the original drain of the camper. Well, the camera's glaring it out on you. There's a piece of plastic down there, just a loose flap. That's right where the drain was in the original camper. If you remember, when I put the tiny house together, I put, I turned the entire floor upside down when I, when I did the floor framing, and then I put on aluminum flashing, then I flipped it back, uh, then I put on the, uh, the plastic, the original plastic cover of the tiny house on wheels, or the, uh, uh, sorry, the camper, the original camper's plastic protective cover between the aluminum flashing and the frame of the trailer, so there would be no, uh, what do you call that, that action, galvanic action or whatever, between the two metals. And this the original sheet happens to have the same drain hole right where I'm putting my bathtub drain hole or my shower drain. That is just amazing chance. All I had to do was extend the slit a little bit on each side and done. There it is. That is so cool. So there it is. Now from underneath I'm going to go in later. Of course I'll have to wait for a warmer day. And call and seal and foam heavily so the bugs can't get up through this floor. And I don't know how I'm going to do it when the bathtub is in place. I'm going to have to figure a way to, to seal around this here. Because right now I have wind blowing up through there. <laughs> this is not good. There's wind blowing in through there. This was a nightmare. I am sure plumbers will cringe when I tell the story I am about to tell. But this was a nightmare. This is supposed to slide up. See, there's a grate here that comes off. This two-inch pipe was supposed to slide up into this rubber gasket that's in this drain. But the problem is the gasket comes out of the drain, and the pipe doesn't want to go in the gasket when it's in the drain. If you take it all apart, the pipe will go in the gasket, but it's a really, really, really tight fit to get the pipe in the gasket in the drain. And this slides, the, the gasket slides up and out this way, and the pipe slides anywhere. And... I just fought for the, with this for like an hour because the gasket kept wanting to come out. It's been a nightmare. What I ended up doing is I had to carve round, the, round off the edges of the pipe with a carpet knife. And then I jammed this in here, the gasket, and then I worked the, the, uh, the pipe in using a rubber mallet. What I did is I turned this upside down and had it on its screen and gently, carefully, beat the pipe in with a rubber mallet. Okay, That took a lot of work. But then, I had to be really careful not to break the tabs off the screen. Okay, That was a nightmare. And then when I got it in there, then the gasket was up pr towards the upper lip quite a ways. So what I did then, sorry I can't really demonstrate because there's not a lot of room in here. And then I used a piece of tape on the edge of the gasket like this, and then I would pound on that lip, the, the tape being on this edge, and I would pound down, working the gasket and pipe together deeper inside that lip. So you can see there's a, there's a lip there, and it's pretty much in place now. But boy, that was a nightmare job. That was really horrible. But I got it. It was an hour of work. I'm sure a plumber would do this in a couple minutes. And I'm sure the plumbers are cringing right now at the story I'm telling, but I didn't know. And honestly, I don't have time to wait a couple days for response and feedback from professionals. I want to get this done. So I did it. It's in there. Now this pop pops through here. Obviously, I still have to put the, um, the put that on the tub, screw it on with the gaskets that come with it, and put it all together. But... I will do that now, and then I'll have to make the spacers down here, because that is where that's going to sit. This is the bottom level right here. This is where the tub is going to be, so it's going to be off the floor. So the next step is to put this on the tub and secure it tightly, and then drop the entire assembly down, see how much space I have, slide in the spacers. Actually, I have to lift that up, nail it, or screw down the spacers to the floor, so everything's stable and secure, and then pop the tub back through the hole. I keep saying tub, I mean shower. So... I'm going to attach that now, and then uh, try it for fit. I'm going to try to let you watch as I go. Alright, I'm going to attempt to show you how I do this. There's not a lot of room. 
And the shower stall pieces behind you, behind the camera, are attacking me. So, this goes on here. That goes through there. This is all quite awkward. I'm sure normally that is supposed to be, that pipe would be in the floor and you'd have to pound this entire assembly onto that pipe, but I do not see how that is done. Honestly, I don't know how they do it. That was a job, that was really a nightmare to work that in place. Now, I gotta see if I have a pipe wrench big enough for that. Because you're supposed to hand tighten it and to give it another quarter turn afterwards with a pipe wrench. Well, I don't have a pipe wrench that big, so I don't know what I'm going to do. That's a big nut. No, I'm not going to get the hammer out like I did on the uh, water tank earlier, don't worry. All right, well, I'm gonna have to probably come back to that with a wrench. So then that, make sure I've got the front being the front, that will go down through the hole in the floor. And my whole shower assembly flops down, boom, right in place. There's my shower. So now, I've got to put the supports under that to keep that off the floor. Well, there it is. Now I've got wind blowing in here. Got quite a breeze blowing in here. So I'll have to put something over that. And go out and start cutting, uh, cutting the spacers. I'm not sure how I'll fix that on the bottom later. I'm going to have to run that into a tank and keep it under the level of water so that the wind cannot blow through. I wonder if there's a probably a shower, a two inch P-trap. I think that's what you call it. That J-shaped um, trap that holds water and it stops wind from blowing through. Might have to put something like that on the bottom. Definitely I'll have to do something like that. Well, I'm going to have to go out and get some barn wood and knock off the ice and snow and shave it down, uh, cut it to size, and pop it in there underneath. And then I'll have my shower base in place and I can put in the shower stall. So I do now have drainage. Essentially, I theoretically have drainage. If I was to pour water in there, it'll probably all get out, give or take, until I tighten that wrench or that nut down properly. All right, I gotta give it some thinking about the wood size here. making the framing for under the shower since it's got to be raised up a little bit to allow the drain to go through
I've got to go out and get another piece. I thought that would be enough. Small barn wood. Obviously this is really, really old. It's out of that barn though. I'm just trying to get a straight line to cut with. cut first would be easier to measure Goggles are thawed out. They steam up on me too much. Not the prettiest wood in the world, but it's what I've got. So I'm going to use.
and it works. <laughs> So there's the floor of my bathtub or my shower area. I keep wanting to say bathtub. It's the floor of the shower for my tiny house on wheels. Okay, there's that. Now I've got to cut a hole in the middle where the drain is going to go. Get all these nails out. A lot of them are pretty loose. I never got to clean anything because it's filthy. So the nails are coming out pretty easily. That's convenient. I'll go get a hammer. I'll finish getting nails out of here. All right, there's my floorboard for the shower. So now I need to measure where the hole's going to be. Oh, well, my goggles are warmed up again, so I can wear them. Ah, oh, I cut my table. That wasn't thinking very well. Well, first time I ever hurt my table and all this work. Not too bad to get that long. Good. Cut across two boards. 
through the snow to sand it off a bit. Snow is a great cleanser. So it's not as bad as it was. Now I can take it inside. Actually, I think I'm gonna sweep it off and I'll take it inside. And we'll go in and uh, continue on inside.